Hello there and welcome to Fly Tying with Upper Creek Angler and Table Rock Trout Unlimited. I don't know about you, but about this time of year when fall really starts to give way to winter, I start thinking back about the uh, the golden stoneflies and, and all that they provided for us in terms of big fish and big fun during the summer. So we're going to tie one of my favorite golden stonefly um, patterns. And um, it's a big one, and it does take a, a little bit of time, so beware. This is a fairly long video, but um, if you learn to tie this pattern, it will not disappoint you. It's absolutely great um, for fishing. We're using an Orvis number 8808 hook. It's a 4X streamer hook with a downturned eye, and this is in a size number 4. So the first thing we're going to do is add a little bit of a um, bend to the hook. So we're going to take the hook and give us a little bit of a lifelike shape to it. And this will become more apparent as we um, as we finish the fly. You can actually buy hooks with that curve already put in. Uh, it takes like three seconds to do it, so I don't buy those. I don't usually buy hooks that come with a singular purpose to them, so it takes a couple seconds to do that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to load the, the hook with a um, several turns of lead. We're not going to put a bead on this. Um, it's gonna, it would mess with the overall realism of the, the fly that we're going to produce. So we're just going to put a, um, a good turn of lead. This fly is not going to have a lot of extra stuff coming off the edge of it. So we can get away with um, without using a bead, there's not going to be a lot of material to reach out and um, grab. Now I'm going to use a, um, a brownish thread on this, but just to quickly cover up this thread and ready ourselves for work, I'm going to use some white thread here just to go in and um, cover the, the lead up so that we can move forward. And this will all be covered up with the the brownish olive thread that I'm actually going to use to um, to tie the fly. Get the bobbin holder out of my way. And the reason I'm using this thread, it was handy um, and it's white so it'll cover up easily and if it didn't then you could um, cover, color over it with a marker but it's a number 210 denier thread so it makes the work of um, making a thread base over the lead quite easy. Um, tie that off. Position the hook. Make sure it's locked in there well. Snip that off and now we're going to switch to the thread that we're actually going to use to tie the fly. This is an olive brown Danville pre-wax 6O for 70 denier. And you do not need to worry too much about covering over the white of that. It's going to be covered over with a ton of dubbing and other materials as we commence to finishing this fly up. So right there where the fly start where the hook starts to bend, we're going to add a small dubbing ball so that our biot tails will easily separate. We don't have to do a lot of work there. We're going to use um, brown goose biots for the tails. I'm going to snip two of them off. If you're not accustomed to working with biots, um, you always want to have the natural curvature of the of the bite pointing away from the hook when you tie it in for a tail. It will um, help the overall pattern uh, to stay curving away and keep those tails separated. Measure those off together. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I like to use the um, the waste material as much as I can to help me build up the body of the fly so that I don't have to do quite as many thread wraps along the way. So 
So that's all um, cemented in. Now we're going to tie in our the, a number of materials that we're going to use. This is um, vinyl UTC ribbing in size midge. And to tie that in, next, this is going to be our ribbing over the dubbing and over the um, the nymph skin that we're going to, to tie in. So again, I'm going to use this almost all the way down the body. It'll help me bulk the fly up without using more dubbing and um, it'll help me create the taper as I go, just adding that in in one big chunk. The next material we're going to use is this finely dotted thin skin. And this is going to be our the back to the fly. And we're going to we're going to tie this in twice. Once at the back and then a much thicker section of it at the front. So you can see the the width of this, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Just separating it from the the back of the card card stock. And once you get that separated, you're going to take and cut a little bit of an angle for yourself so that it ties in easily. And you want to tie it all the way back to where your tails come up so that when you start to wrap it over, you do not have a gap between when you're, where your tails start and where your... Um, your nip skin starts to wrap over. For this, for the body of this fly for dubbing, we're using Orbis Spectra Blend, and um, I am using the brown olive version of it. We're going to go through a lot of this dubbing on this, so um, I'm going to pull several big hanks of it out. And we're going to just commence quickly to um, loading this thread with fairly thick noodles. This is a big fly, it's a big meal, so we don't want to skimp on um, dubbing. And um, do consider the, the overall taper of the fly as you're putting this on. You can always go back with more passes if you need to, but getting dubbing off once it is on a hook um, can be a task. So you can see back here um, toward the base of this, I don't have a really good taper right there. So I'm going to go back at and add just a little bit there to smooth that out. Right there, there's a little bump there. And much better. Once you get the dubbing on the the thread, you really don't have to worry about a lot of the dubbing except that which is going on next. So I've got a bunch of, of it down here that's a, kind of a nest that I will work on um, evening out once I'm ready for, for it to actually go on the hook. And I'm just going to take a couple more passes to work on the, the taper right here, and then um, we'll be done with this part of the fly. Okay, so I've taken the dubbing right to the point where the, the hook starts to bend, and now we are going to pull this nymph skin over. You don't want to pull it too tight because this stuff will break, um, and I don't really know a way to tell you what the break point is except to uh, break it, and then you'll find it. But I have um, broken it before, and um, you do want to make sure that you make several wraps over top, several wraps in front because it will slide out on you. And then I always leave a little tag um, that I can come back over later. Now we're going to take the, the vinyl nymph rib that we tied in and start wrapping it over both the dub body and the, the nymph skin. 
help us create the the ribbed effect on this fly. And this material also will like to slide out on you. So as we've talked about in the past, always make sure that you make at least a couple wraps both in front and behind the material that you have tied in to lock it in place. And then go ahead and snip that. I also leave that um, snip just a, a little bit long. So now we're going to leave the back of the fly alone. We're going to go up and work on the front. We're going to tie our um, feelers in at the top. You could save this step to the end, but if you tie them in now, you will have them as a guide for where your eyes are going to start and where you need to quit um, working on the working on adding material. So I'm going to tie these in right here in front. You don't want these to be overly long. Same idea as the um, the fly, the body of these curving away from the hook and just like I did in the back I'm going to use this waste material um, to help me add some bulk so that I don't have to make up for it in dubbing or other material. So right here we're going to put when the time is right a set of um, monofilament eyes that I'm going to show you how to do. So here we're going to tie in our next piece of um, nymph skin. We're going to cut this wider because this is going to be our wing cases. And you know this stuff is not the cheapest in the world but um, I say go ahead and cut more than you think you're going to need. So this is more than I'm going to need. However, um, cutting more than you need the first time means you don't screw up and come up short at the end and, and have wasted all of it. So any of those, you save yourself money and time in the long run if you cut them overly long to begin with. So we're going to cut this at an angle too to be able to easily tie it in. Now, we are going to tie in what are going to be our legs. For this, we are using a product called um, Japanese Nymph Skin. I'm sorry, that's not right. Japanese Nymph Legs. And um, I actually left them in the other room. I will be right back. Sorry about that. We're going to tie in three sets and we will um, kind of cut them a little bit to length to start and then we'll go back and shape them up. We'll shape them up at the end. I'm sorry, we tie these in upside down. We're going to tie in three sets of these guys. And um, to get this this one to set, you're going to have to put a turn in front of it, just like that. And then it'll end up setting evenly on you. And these are going to be bent into place anyway when we're done. Bent into shape. Thank you. 
So several figure eights around each of these sets of legs, and then they'll um, they'll ride parallel with each other. And then just to help make sure they're not going anywhere, I'm going to put a um, a run of um, zappa gap through them. And then go in and get a little bit of the excess of the zappa gap with some mop fly material. And make several more passes of thread through the whole system just to really set those guys in place. So the next thing that we're going to add, just as a, um, a marker for space for us, is our monofilament eyes. And we're going to add these at the top. We are using 20-pound um, Maxima. It's already brown, so I don't have to worry about coloring them a color. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a, um, a pair of hemostats, and put about um, an inch on each side and then start to burn this. And it'll burn into a little ball. And then do the other side. Don't touch it. It's hot. And if you touch it, it'll start to string out on you. So this is what we're looking for right here. And um, once it is cooled, we'll start, we'll tie that in. Um, before we do that, actually, I'm going to go back and, and do our, while that's cooling, I'm going to go back and do our first set of um, wing buds back here. Go back here and add in more of the, um, the dubbing that we used. You wanted to use a darker color for a contrast at the thorax, you could certainly do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the same material in black, the same um, Spectra Blend dubbing with uh, the brown olive and just mix it with some black right here in my fingers and um, use it for the abdomen just to give it a little bit of um, extra color texture around the abdomen. Remember the abdomen of the fly is thicker, so we want to bulk that up just a little bit more than the, the body behind it. And see that didn't get all the way down, so just take it back. Add on. Now we're going to take the thread in front of this and we're going to put in our first wing bud. We're going to take this, push it back, go in behind the legs now. Those will bend right back where we want them to. Pull it back and then push these guys back out of place. More of the dubbing blend for our next wing bug case. Our next part of the abdomen where we're going to put a wing bug. Check the surrounding area. No, I have not forgotten about those monofilament eyes. That's a part of the tying step that can go either way. Tied the fly enough that I don't personally need the the space marker, though you may. 
until you get a few of these behind your under your belt. Our next wing bot is going to come over, push back. Pull back again. Add your next section of thorax. I'm checking my time. Only had 30 minutes of shooting on the camera. Adding one more dubbing noodle here and then I think we'll be done. Ah, uh, nope, just a little bit more. It's good to always check the overall profile of the bug as you are finishing it up. It might look great on um, one side, then you double check on the other. You can see it needs a little bit more work. So now we're going to fold this wing, this last wing bud back. And I'm going to go in and um, clip out at an angle my excess so that it will be easy to tie in. Now I did not get a great tip there, but it will be enough to get the job done, I think. Actually, no, it's not. I'm going to go back and just redo that really quickly. Get a little bit more of a place to tie in. Sharper angle. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> there we go. Finally grabbed hold of it. Okay. We are getting toward the the end of this. We're gonna take our um our monofilament eyes and center them up. I want them to come right down here. Several figure eights over these. And then um, to finish off and just clean this up a little bit, we'll take one more spot of dubbing and clean that little base up right there. And I'm going to take a brown marker and really uh, blend that in. Okay, now, so the tying part of the fly is over, we've just got to shape up these legs. We're going to go in and do a whip finish right here behind the eyes where that dubbing was. Now, um, we're going to cut the, the ones on this side are already a little bit long, so I'm going to cut them to size. 
The first thing you want to do, that's a little bit long, is put in an angle at each of the feet. So you're just going to grab with the hemostat and turn. Turn. And then go in the middle of it and create another hinge. And then on this side, hinge, 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 and then the feet again, feet again, feet again. Oop. Now I'm just going to take a, um, a brown sharpie and color these guys brown. This um, material holds a um, permanent marker ink really well. So once it dries, it's not going anywhere. And then if um, we need to add some more angularity to these, you can always go back in and redo it. Starting to get lazy. I could feel my time before the battery on my camera and it's uh memory starts to die on me but I don't really think the fish care all that much of these legs are um, totally angular or partially curved but there you can see a super realistic imitation pattern of the um, golden stonefly that absolutely makes my life happy um, during the summer and late fall when those great big bugs are in the water so definitely tie yourself up some of these when you're not explaining it they go a whole lot faster so um, happy time